to? At home, you work 365 days out of the year, but you only have two weeks off. What up? So I have the same mentality. Um, you know, I'm trying to stay busy just with music alone, and it's not like the old days like it used to be where you can have one band and tour eight months with that one band. And, you know, now you do one album, and that lasts a month. You might go on tour with that band once, twice if you're lucky. That lasts two weeks, and then Dream what do you do for the rest of the year? So... Um, I've, you know, found ways to stay busy, and uh, on top of that, you know, I'm in demand, which is a nice thing for myself to feel good about. When you know, when a band is like looking for someone, they call me, so, you know, that should make me feel good. And yeah, I look at it, I look at it as work. I'm like a carpenter. I can't live on building one house a year. I need to build 50 of them. So, well, yeah, I, you know, I, but I'm careful about what I do with my markets and stuff like that. And of course, you know, every band is different, so um, I don't think that's really too much of a problem. You know, I mean, at first I thought. It would be and but you just gotta um whatever i'm doing in one market with one band i won't come back to that market with that other band until later so i, I always time it out comes to mind for Burning Star is just uh, a bunch of kids um, getting together and putting this album out that uh, really was influenced by uh, Iron Maiden and Judas Priest and Angel Witch and, and the likes, uh, Saxon, those types of bands. And um, not really, I don't think at that point, you know, we, we really understood what we were doing. We may not have even been very original at that point. Um, but people seem to love that album quite a bit. Remnants of War, uh, there were some lineup changes, and um, I think uh, that was the beginning of the spark of originality, where we began to really become ourselves. Uh, I don't know, Distant Thunder? Distant Thunder, um, I think really starting to find ourselves as musicians, sort of, or, or at least creating and learning our art more. Um, getting more familiar with the, our own instruments, so to speak, and you know, with me singing started kind of taking another step forward. Uh, and of course, Distant Thunder reminds me of coming to Europe for the first time, so that's <coughs> memorable. Nosferatu uh, totally reminds me of um, all my the passions that I've always had. And uh, I think when I think of Nosferatu the most, I think of how we could have made it really big with the whole vampire thing, and we fucked up. <laughs> We let everybody else get rich off of it, you know. How did that happen, you know? King of Hell, uh, well, that reminds me. Well, I guess all I can think about that is it's, it's the beginning of the new era of Hellstar. And then Glory is basically, I think, what we found ourselves to be for the, the next 20 years as a band, style, sound, the whole nine yards. Chaos is, is kind of the album that uh, I've always wanted to make. It um, I've always wanted Hellstar to be like really heavy, and I think uh, we've we've accomplished it throughout the years. But uh, I think Glory really nails it. It's like the album that I've always wanted to make as far as heaviness. That I know when people listen to it will be like, damn. That shit was heavy, you know. That yeah. you know, that, and that's what I've always wanted to do. And I'm I'm really quite proud of that album for that fact, you know, because um, it's a sense of satisfaction. We know in America it actually brought the band up to a point that we needed. And the states is a bit more of a hostile, aggressive country, so the heavier, darker stuff seems to appeal to the kids there. And we're gaining a lot more of an American audience again, which is what we've always deserved for years, anyways. Next album is going to be <laughs> heavy as fuck, you know, for sure. The older we get, the grumpier we get. So don't expect it to ever go backwards. We're never going to deliver you a Turbo Lover or something like that. So that ain't going to happen. <laughs> Edit that. Yeah. Do anything but Turbo Lover. <laughs> oh, I like retiring. You know. Oh, they're retiring. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
is uh, is downloaded before it's even released, and the downloads are you know fifteen thousand, twenty thousand. It's going to affect everything, you know. So uh, that's just the nature of the beast. Um, we can't uh, change any of that. We can only accept it, and you know. Uh, just try to move on and hopefully there are people out there that are going to be like okay yeah I'm, I've, I downloaded it I'm going to go out and buy it and support this band or I'm going to go to the show and buy a shirt because um, bands just can't continue to uh, to produce music if if there's no income you know and I think at some point the fans need to realize that as well I don't want to be like the whole Lars thing. It's it's pretty unfortunate that people like hate him for going after Napster. I think he was going after Napster more because the of the leak, not so much for the downloads. But uh, in the end, everybody is like, oh, you know, this guy's rich, and you know, he's he was really looking out for everyone, you know. And um, uh, hopefully, the fans will 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 realize that and and see that hey, if you keep downloading and stealing basically um, bands like us won't be able to do it anymore so that's going to become more and more uh, of an issue later on well and to answer that question you asked me so that's why I keep playing as much as I can because you know we don't, we don't make anything off the records anymore they barely give you enough to do the record merch and merch helps a lot you know Now, um, we try as much as we can to control that to whoever's buying the shows. You know, if some uh, promoter, especially at home, because knows that Hellstar will have a huge crowd anyways, and they turn around and go try to sell some tickets for 25, 30 bucks, I'll pull the show immediately and go, dude, <clears throat> you're not going to have those 600 people there for that price. So if you want this show, you take that back down to $10 advance, 15 at the door. Or, you know what, you, I'll give it to someone else. Because, you know, overcharging for tickets I think is ridiculous and I've, I've gone to shows that luckily for me I'm always on the guest list when a show comes through but then I look at the ticket price and I go come on that's thirty dollars for so-and-so I ain't gonna say names but I'm like that's ridiculous see what it is is a lot of people don't realize sometimes the band who's who the person makes the, mo the least money it's the promoter then it's this and it's that and then all at the end of the day the band gets this but they don't think about all the expenses that goes in at the end of the day so I mean, really, it's uh, you know, it's it's sad that that's happening. But yes, we, we do try to maintain as much as we can, making our money out on the road. If there is, you know, they'll contact you. I mean, and that's the bottom line. We'd love to do all these things too, but, you know, I mean, I know I've got contacts to promoters in South America. I got contacts to this and that. But you know what? When they want, when, when you have a market there, they'll let you know. And you'll get that weird email go, guys, we just got an offer to go to South America. <laughs> and that's kind of where everything is at. But I think there's, I know there's a huge market for us in South America. And we did have a guy contact us a year ago, and he's been trying to get us down there. But it, it's one of those things where I notice when you start getting to the technical part of the agreement, then there's silence for a while. Oh, I didn't know we had to pay him. <laughs> yeah. oh. Sure, we'd love to bring you to South America, and we'll do this, and we'll do that. Wow, dude, wonderful, man, we can't wait. And by the way, what is our fee per night? I haven't heard from him in five months, dude. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> No, 
most of the band has actual day gigs, you know. Um, we just schedule everything to where uh, we're taking uh, holiday days to do tours and stuff like that, you know. And um, uh, it's it's always uh, good that your family is quite understanding as well because you're actually taking away time from them as when you're doing this but uh, you know I think for the most part everybody's family understands that this is what we are and what we do and um, uh, we always try to do our best to uh, spread uh, the, the love around and, and be able to go out and and do stuff with the family and and also do these tours um, for us it's very important to come out here and, and, and play because um, you know there has to be support for for the product and uh, we all understand that and um yeah i mean he's, he's hit it right on the nail you know i mean uh you know i uh, me on the other hand i try to stay as busy as possible but but that's the other thing is that you know with me being able to be blessed is the word i like to use that i've got offers for many other bands that want me to <clears throat> to work with them it gives hellstar the time to to stay home and do what they need to do as you know their responsible family lives and their vacation time from work and i and i work around it and when the reunion happened <clears throat> i knew that was coming along with the package but you know you have to admit there's nothing like having the real band together so it's all worth it to me you know, and, and I have the I have my tribute band. Then I got him in my tribute band in Texas now, him and him and Mikey. Yeah. So, you know, but that's just weekend fun, you know, and that's not like really pulling away. But no, I think it's it's a fine balance for, you know, what's going on. It keeps everything keeps everything at a level. So I'm, I don't, I'm not playing with, you know, not abusing Hellstar out constantly all the time. expenses uh, yeah. I, I would never ask for the band to pay for a hotel for my wife and myself or my food and my wife's food and, and that would just uh, it would just get too expensive if I wanted to to bring her along as far as a holiday maybe that would be cool but um, you know over here right now I mean this this tour is brutal it's a uh, it's a uh, 11 shows in 12 days uh, eight countries <laughs> uh, almost 6,000 miles I we'd be divorced you know <laughs> so um yeah, i never do uh, and i think i don't think rob probably will ever do that as as well because he has three small children yeah but uh james is, has the luxury of bringing his fiance along and uh, she helps quite out immensely you know the helping out with the uh, Tour managing and also professional merch, merch and professional so merch, and she comes along as she comes along as part of the, the crew into work. So it's a different story, you know. And uh, but yeah, other than that, um, like you said, you know, now if we're Nickelback and we can all have our own tour bus with it, you know, that's got a circus inside of it and all that for the kids and a and a per personal tutor so they get their education, then then maybe, you know. <laughs> we're too heavy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do them every day. Every day. As much as you can. <laughs> Overdose. Yeah. No, we're just kidding. <laughs> no. We all partied a lot when we were this younger. This is our drug of choice, yeah, pretty this is much. Our drug you know. of choice, you know. But we're old. I mean, we can't, uh, yeah. you can't party all night and, and, and expect to, to go out and perform and, and give right. a good show. And, I mean, uh, maybe when we were younger, we were a little more carefree and yeah. didn't really worry so much about it. But, I mean... You know, now we're all, we're like, hey, these people paid money, you know, to right. come see you. And so, um, never, I never judge anybody by what they do in life, but it's just like anything too much of, too much of anything is bad for you. And if you don't know that, then, then you have a problem, 
You know, I mean, if you're an occasional pot smoker, cool, and you go to work, you do your thing, that's what you do, fine. But if you're a pot smoker every day throughout the day and you lose 30 jobs in a month, and every time we go out and I got to buy your beers, because like, well, dude, you know, and it's like, and, but, oh, hold on, well, I wonder why you ain't got any money. You know, then you start to frown on people's habits. But we all have habits, you know. And the interview is over. Yeah. <laughs> My habit is masturbating too much, so. Cut. <laughs>